The era of the old pharaonic state was one of the finest eras of ancient Egypt. Its kings were famous for their power and full control over the Egyptian lands. Also the people's appreciation of these rulers reached to consider them gods or representatives of the gods. But after the priests of the Temple of the Sun controlled the state in the era of the Fifth Dynasty and then until the great disaster occurred during the reign of King Bibi II, where a big revolution swept the Egyptian lands, in which the people were able to express the extent of their anger at the pharaoh's neglect and preoccupation with the people, but the results of this revolution were not very good, as it eventually led to the entry of Egypt into the first era of decay since the beginning of the pharaonic seventh dynasty. Since the beginning of the seventh dynasty, Egypt entered into a state of extreme chaos, until this led to the entry of the tribes of West Asia and their settlement of the Egyptian lands. Due to the cases of famine that occurred in Asia at that time, which led to the resort of these to Egypt and their settlement of Egyptian lands, some historians mention in historical sources that this period was one of the worst periods in the history of Egypt, where injustice spread significantly, and ancient Egyptian literature talked extensively about this period, to the point it reminded that people were wishing for death on life in this period, but with the beginning of the Ninth Dynasty, this thing changed, as the Enasia family began to appear, and took the city of Enasia as the capital of their state, and some believe that the invaders came to Fayum and were able to control central and northern Egypt, so their historical period was considered within the era of the first decay. Whether the kings of Enasia were invaders or sons of Egypt, but the reality imposes that they were the kings of Egypt throughout the 9th dynasty and the 10th dynasty, to the extent that some thought that at the beginning of their rule they succeeded in controlling the kings of Thebes, which is already at that time much less than the cities of the north, whether in the nature of the culture of the people of Thebes themselves, or the level of civilization and fame for the cities of the north, but before that we return to the founding king of the ninth dynasty, which is of course King Kiti I which has been described in some sources as a sharp temperament does not care about the interests of his people compared to his personal interests, and was also described as oppression and cruelty. It is possible that this description is due to the success of Kiti I in imposing his control over Egypt by force, it is natural that it is described as cruelty and severity, although some accounts stated that this pharaoh was light shade loving laughter and humor. There is no doubt that Enasia succeeded at the beginning of the Ninth Dynasty in controlling Egypt, including, of course, Thebes, but in a period of time many strong rulers appeared in Thebes, including the great Intef this king, who was able to advance the level of civilization and culture of the city, after he was at rock bottom and his ambition reached his desire for independence from the king of Inasia Pharaoh Kiti and there is no objection also to controlling some of the lands of central Egypt, including the city of Tyne with the great religious status that the Egyptians sometimes made pilgrimages to, so he began to prepare his armies and went to the battlefield. Pharaoh Kiti mentions that the first battle between him and Intef the Great was able to send a very strong army that was able to deter Intef and defeat him, but he committed many crimes as he destroyed many holy places in the city of Tyne, so Intef took advantage of this thing and began in its effects public opinion of the Egyptian people and succeeded in preparing his second campaign and went to battle, but he was defeated the second time as well. Some historians believe that the religious aspect of King Kiti affected him negatively significantly where he felt very guilty about what his soldiers did to the temples of the city of Tina so he felt that the gods would punish him. So he neglected to prepare his armies the third time that Intef managed to control the city of Tyne, but he was satisfied with that and asked to sign a treaty between him and King Kiti. The religious side of King Kiti played an important role in this war as this man was characterized by religiosity and piety, so he felt very guilty, and when Intef succeeded in capturing the city of Tina Kiti felt that the gods punish him, because this land was, as the Egyptians believe, the passage to the afterlife, so Kiti believes that the gods prevent him from going to the afterlife, so when Intef asked for peace, Kiti immediately agreed, and thought that this was his last chance to atone for his sins. 
He signed a treaty between him and Intef that includes not paying Intef any tribute or taxes to King Kiti. Secondly, King Kiti has the right to take what he wants from the stones from the quarries of Aswan. Indeed Kiti agreed to these conditions and some believe that Kiti knew the extent of the weakness of the economic resources of the South so he overlooked the idea of collecting taxes from them. And the most strange of that is his warning to his son after him from fighting the people of the South, which made the authority of the South increase over time to the point that it I became equal or more powerful than the people of the North. With the increase of Thebes' power over time and the emergence of powerful kings such as Manahotep II and also the weakening of the Inasia dynasty over time, and the occurrence of many revolts within the city of Inasia itself, this led to Pharaoh Mentuhotep II exploiting this situation and controlling the whole of Inasia and reuniting Egypt again.